I'm with the Home Builders Association of Berks County. We also have our executive officer, Christian Molesic, in the back here. I'd like to thank you for coming out this morning. We've been partnering with Habitat for Community for about a year and a half now and doing these seminars on a quarterly basis. We have HBA member Sherman Williams Company that's joined us today for our seminar. So I'm Bill and Shane. I'm actually a paint rep for Sherman Williams. I specialize in new construction and I travel quite a wide territory dealing with all of local builders. So I like to see some of the trending and stuff. But one of the things I'm going to go over a little bit is preparation is the key to every project. So, <laughs> um, and that's whether you're doing something like furniture, like furniture, or you're painting the roof in the column. Painting the exterior, even down concrete, because a lot of the concrete is getting painted and stained these days. It's just not a decorative surface. So, uh, the first thing you know, you want to assess if there's cracks. You want to assess if there's any sheens. And there's lots of products out there now that you can use that are very biodegradable, easy to use to get away from the sanding. You don't like to sand. And they will dull the surface and repair it and clean it prior to painting, which is great for good work. Maybe you're trying to spruce up your kids' room. You got two different end tables, they're not quite the same. You paint them the same color, no one's ever going to know. And you have bright colors for kids' room. It's just a nice way to, to refresh furniture or refresh something that you're going to use. And then, way too, you can set and incorporate in those in the colors of your of your room. So, if you're like the model was talking about, maybe you're going to do greens on your walls. They got something you're going to crack on the table. Yeah, so we're going to you know, blend with that. Just for some hard work. That, I think, is everything I have. Can you explain how you do it? How do you do crackle, for example? Is that just a pain, or is it multi-steps? It's just multi-steps. What we did with that was we did um, a flat finish on the base, what we call a base coat of paint. First, we sanded it, ideally on a prime it, put a painted coat of paint on it. Just a nice flat latex paint on there. And that's the blue. You see. And that's the blue. The first coat is the blue. That's the blue you see underneath. We'll let that dry completely. We let it dry. I think two days. Then you take a crackle finish, which is just a crackle. It's a, it's a medium, like something that we sell in our stores, and you want to put that on a clear coat. Now that's something that you want to do pretty much the same day. You're going to crack on the same day that you to crack. So you want to. We used a foam roller for the top parts with the flat finishes. That will give you a bigger and longer crack. Uh, if you have a smaller piece of furniture, you want more of those, they call them uh, like tiny glaze, or they might call it a webbing flat, uh, crack. You take a little sea sponge. That just gives you a different technique. And your sea sponge, you would just dab on the corner of the table. It gives you that little tiny fine webbing cracks. Uh, once the mat crackle heat is on, ours you have an hour to four hours to put your paint over top of that. Again, just roll it on with your top coat. You don't, we you want to use either a flat or a satin finish. We use a satin from the white color. Uh, once that's dry, you'll start to see, as it goes, you'll start to see it crack. <laughs> Watch it go as, as it's cracked. Um, and then again, once that's dry, not, if you were doing something like that on the wall, we don't recommend putting a, uh, we did an oil varnish on top of that. Just for durability, if somebody's going to put something on it, somebody's going to be putting their feet up on it. That just gives it, again, more durability. Um, and there again, that's, once that's dry, you just need one coat. You just need one coat of uh, crackle, the one coat of the top coat. Varnish, depending on how heavily it is used, you may want to do two coats. And once it's dry, you're good to go. And for some reason, you decide, you know what, I'm tired of looking at the crackle finish. What you would do, but you want to still keep the table, you're going to reuse it somewhere else. You're going to just paint over that with an oil primer. Let it dry, and go. Or if you want to take it back down to a wood finish, there again, you can just put a paint strip on that, scrape it down, if you want to go back to the One thing I had done with the crackle finish, um, read the directions, um, didn't listen to them, and they say just go in one direction and don't go back. I went back because I wasn't, you know, immediately, and um, when I put the, the, the top coat on, it didn't have the nice crackle finish that I was looking for because I interfered with that. Part, you know, part of it is you yeah. do want to kind of read the directions and even do a practice board. 
you know, we've done this a couple times now. First time I did it, I just took a board um, when it first came out just to try it. So you're not getting like, you know, you're sort of getting an idea of what to do, but yeah, that will it will lift it and crafting do it a lot of you know quick time. But you know, another thing that you could do with something like that would be to do like a really soft sponge finish over top of it, which is a matter of again doing a painted base coat. You could do a sea sponge, you take a sea sponge, some glaze and another color. Very, you know, you just very soft, like that gives you kind of like that soft kind of beachy look. Um, even put some stencils on top of it, which is kind of give you that cottagey furniture look. But crackle, yeah, that is crackle. It's, it can be a little tricky if it's humid, but if you just take the time, it can be a really cute look.